Welcome back. If you haven't done so already, watch the Salvation Assurance videos. You're not going to understand any of this unless you do. Period. If you sin, you're not saved. Period. There's no negotiating. This is non-negotiable. The Bible means exactly what it says, and you find that in 1 John 3, 6, and it confirms itself in 1 John 3, 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. If you wonder why, go watch the other videos. Um, other than that, let's pick up where we left off. We are at Romans 3, 9, and 10. Um, that is going to be this video. Romans 3, verse 9 says, What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. All of them. Every one of them. Verse 10 says, As it is written, There is none righteous. No, not one. Your flesh will never be righteous. Your flesh profits nothing. John 6, 63. Period. If you quit drinking, quit smoking, quit, quit, quit whatever, quit everything you possibly can, you're still going, if you're under that law, you're still going to sin. Right? You're still going to break the law. No matter what you do, you're always going to break God's law in the flesh. Always. This is what Jesus was for, was to free you from that law. So now what you do is not sin. It's just you being stupid. That's really what it boils down to. It's just you being stupid. Right? Can't be sin. Not if you believe in Jesus. End of story. Because he did what he did. Right? And you have to believe. His word means exactly what it says. First John 3, 6 says, if you sin, you don't know him. So we're moving on. Uh, John or Romans 3, 9 through 10. And the Gentiles are all, Jews and Gentiles are all under sin. None are righteous. No, not one. The reference to 11. Uh, chapter 2, verse 11. I love this. For there is no respect of persons with God. Understand that. Okay? Romans 2, verse 11 says, There is no respect of persons with God. It is the same as John 5, 41, where Jesus says, I receive not honor from men. There's no respect. God doesn't care what you think you can do. He sent Jesus to do what Jesus did. Jesus fulfilled the law. You cannot. So stop. Okay. So... Uh, and 3.28, Romans 3.28, he's, uh, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Period. That's the Ten Commandments and the entire 603 other ones. They're all gone. Jesus was, the law itself was a prophecy about Jesus. I've gone over this in previous videos, I'm not doing it again. Okay, uh, Romans 3.20, By law is no flesh justified, right? Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Here we go. For by the law is knowledge of sin. This is, this is where it tells you. The only way to know that you're sinning is to compare yourself to the law. So, when Jesus died, he took down the law, Ephesians 2.15. Period. All of it. The commandments in ordinances. That's both. That's the ordinances, the 603, and the commandments that are written in stone. And we're going to get into that later because it talks about the ministration of death engraved in stones. In Corinthians but right now Romans 320 uh, reference 324 through 26 which is being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus this is the best one so far I think um, whom God this is 25 whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God so God already knew right so when you go to him and you say, save me, you have to understand what you're biting into, man. Period. The, the, the whole repentance thing is just a change of mind. It's changing your mind about yourself. It's realizing that you are garbage compared to that law. He fulfilled that law. So if you believe in him, now your garbageness is just you being stupid. Okay. So to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness. This is 26. I did this anyway. To declare, I say it at this time, His righteousness, that He might be just, and the justifier of Him which believes in Jesus. He justifies those who believe in Him. Period. It doesn't matter what you do. You are justified already. If you just put your faith in Him, because He freed you from the law that calls it sin. So, by the law is knowledge of sin. Now you don't have the law. Now what? Now what? Go love. Okay? So... We'll check that one off. Romans 4.15. <laughs> I love this one. Romans 4.15. He says here, 
Because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. He tells you right there. Okay? Ephesians 2.15 says he abolished the law. He abolished the commandments contained in ordinances. Right? Where there is no law, there is no transgression. You have to understand what Jesus really did for you. And you have to believe that and trust that. Right? If you deny him in your works, Titus 1.16 tells you what you get when you deny him in any work you do. Anything you do, bad, good, or indifferent, deny him and it's sin. And John 3, 1 John 3, 6, I'm always going to go back to that. Because that's the verse that set me on this, man. I couldn't, I couldn't stand not being able to tell my kids the truth, not knowing, right? So I set out to know him. Turns out he was waiting for me all along. <laughs> all right, so Romans 4, 15, the law works wrath where there is no law, there is no transgression. You ever tell a kid not to do something? I think I went over that too. So Romans 4.4, 4, okay? This one should scare you, right? Romans 4.4, 4, the exact words in the King James says, Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So if you think that you're going to keep the Ten Commandments or that you have to, right? Your, your reward is not remembered of grace. You can say you believe all you want, but you're not trusting him when you sin, Right? Because you're calling it sin and it, he cleansed it, right? He cleansed it. So you're not trusting him. So your reward's not remembered of grace. It's remembered of debt to the rest of the law that you didn't keep. And if you think for one second that those 603 ordinances don't still stand for the unbeliever, you better bet they do. I don't think those are gone, right? The entire law still stands for the unbeliever. You better believe it. First Timothy 1 7 through 11 tells you that the law is for the unrighteous, right? And the unrighteous is simply the unbeliever. 2 Corinthians 6.14, right, says, uh, if I remember, this may not be word for word, but have, ha, uh, be not unequally yoked with an unbeliever for what fellowship does righteousness have with unrighteousness? Unbelieving is unrighteousness. Believing in everything you do, you get his righteousness. Philippians 3.9 be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law but his righteousness which is of faith which is of God <laughs> okay so we're done with Romans 4.15 Romans 4.4 um, be good enough here this one should scare you to him who works is the gift not remembered of grace but of debt not the exact words but you were supposed to be following along in your Bible yeah open your Bible this means if you try keeping one law to be good enough you will owe the debt for the rest Yes, even you who think you are saved, you are not if you are still, still attempting to be good enough, thinking you can be your own holiness and righteousness or that you even need to try. And that's actually heresy. That's a heresy is what that's called. You have actually fallen from grace in doing this. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 2. Right? I was just talking to somebody about this five minutes ago. 1 Corinthians 1 through 2 says, and I know I've read over this before, but it never hurts. 1 Corinthians 1 and 2, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I have preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. You law keepers, you're believing in vain. You're going to be the one saying, Lord, Lord, on that day. I promise. All right? So Galatians 5, 4. Let's see if I had a little bit. Galatians 5, 4 says, Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever you are, whoso, whoever, whosoever of you are justified by the law. Ye are fallen from grace. That's what it says. You want to lose your salvation? That's how you lose your salvation. Compare yourself to the law. He is the law. He fulfilled the law. Jesus is the bomb. He's a boss. He's the boss. He's the Lion of Judah, the Rose of Sharon, the propitiation, which means stand-in, by the way. He's your stand-in, right? I was talking to a dude. Uh, I want to throw a shout-out real quick to Signs and Wonders. Um, I did a debate last night with this guy, Alex, and he kept saying, you know, his opinion, his opinion. Well, your opinion, dude. The Bible says that your opinion is wrong. The Bible says if you sin, you don't know God. And he said he felt like he needed to be the, uh, he needed to, basically pay for his sins. He said he needed to feel accountable. That's the word he used. He wanted to be accountable for his sins. No, you don't. No, you don't. You want to put your trust in Jesus and, and trust that Jesus already paid the penalty. 
He already paid the penalty. If you trust him, he freed you from the law. He already took the whole weight of it. All of it. Anything you do today, anything you do tomorrow, anything you do the day after. He took the whole weight. Understand that. Okay? Romans 4, 5. I'll let this go to 15 minutes. Romans 4, 5. But to him that worketh not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. To him that worketh not, Right? I don't have this one as a reference in here, but I'm going to go to it anyway. It's John. Okay. Uh, where is it? It says we're... Okay. John 9 verse 4 says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As Jesus is its red letter. Okay. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night come, when no man can work. In verse 5 he says, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. He's the light of the world. When he ascended to the Father, the light left. Now it's night, no man can work. Understand that that is confirmed in Romans 4.4, 4, where it says, To he who works is the reward not remembered of grace, but of debt. Romans 4.5 confirms what Jesus says. He says, But to him that worketh not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Faith. All faith. In everything you do. Hands down. Okay? Um, so here, I'll give you some good news at the end of this because your next video ain't going to be so good. Romans 5, 15, 16, and 18. Alright? I'm going to read these to you. Romans 5, 15. Romans chapter 5, verse 15 says, But not as the offense so also is the free gift. Free means cost you nothing. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. Free gift of grace for faith. Uh, verse 16, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. You have to have faith. You have to trust him until you die doing all the wretchedness that you already do. And if you trust him through that, all the way through that, that what he said is true, for that you receive grace. That is obedience to faith. Obedience to faith, that's what you get grace for. Romans 1.5. Let's make this very clear. You don't get obedience from faith. You get grace for obedience to faith. Romans 1.5. I'm going to read it to you and then I'm going to close this one out. Romans 1.5. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for His name. Not my name. His name. Right? I'm not telling you to believe in me. I'm not telling you to believe what I'm telling you. I'm telling you to read your Bible. Trust your Bible. Trust His Word. In doing so, you're trusting Him in full. In full. And if you believe every word your Bible tells you, you'll never go wrong. You can't go wrong. I'm telling you. Go read Proverbs 30, verse 5. You're going to love it. His word is pure. Pure. He's pure. He did all that for you. I'm so excited. All right. Enjoy your day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Simple. The word is the truth. If you sin, you're not saved.